Hello YouTubers, how are you doing? How are you feeling this week? Let me know in the comments below. Give me a little thumbs up and please hit subscribe while you're there. It really helps support my channel. This week I'm talking about a hot topic. Um, I hope I do it justice, but you know, I'm not a medical doctor. This work has not been reviewed by a medical doctor. It's not to be taken in lieu of medical advice. I'm just sharing my research, experiences, and opinion with you. So, I wanted to talk a little bit about doxycycline. Is it enough? How effective is it for Lyme disease treatment? And Lyme disease treatment is a highly debated issue amongst the experts. I'm going to link above a video that I did all about the controversies surrounding Lyme disease treatment. But this week I wanted to kind of just dive into some of the research and studies that have been done around the treatment protocol for Lyme disease. The Infectious Disease Society of America, also referred to as the IDSA throughout this video, they have created a treatment protocol which the CDC relies on. And previously, when I started Lyme treatment in 2015, it was 14 to 28 days of doxycycline or a comparable um, antibiotic. Recently, they have actually changed that treatment protocol of 14 to 28 days to 10 to 21 days of doxycycline. And if you are in an endemic area um, and see the tick bite, see the bullseye rash, you are to be given one dose of doxycycline um, if you caught it within the first 72 hours after the tick bite. There is a lot of uncertainty around the effectiveness of these treatments because Lyme disease testing is not very accurate. Um, the blood test that we rely on for Lyme disease testing is actually looking for the antibody response in the body. It's not looking for the actual bacteria itself. And multiple, multiple studies have come out stating that those antibodies are not produced in the first several weeks of um, infection. So if you're getting a Lyme test in those early stages of Lyme disease before your body has had a chance to produce those antibodies, a lot of, you know, a lot of experts have come out and said, hey, false negative results on those tests are very, very common. Depending on the source, um, there's anywhere between like 36% to 65% failure rate with these 28-day um, uh, treatment protocol. I'm not real clear on why they changed it to 21 days, but um, you know, I have never heard of anyone ever getting just a single pill of antibiotic and expecting it to do anything. So that's really interesting to me that they have decided that um, you know if if you're exposed to Lyme disease, then you're to be given one single dose of doxycycline, and that's it. <laughs> so I've never heard of any other illness where you get one single pill. Even when you know I was a kid and had whatever going on, they give you a Z pack, which is like five days of antibiotic. Um, so I'm not real clear on how they came up with these dosages because, as I said, the testing for Lyme disease is very inaccurate, especially in those early stages. So there's no real way, definitive way, to determine if you have been cured of Lyme disease because those antibodies, once they are produced, and anywhere between like four to six weeks is what I have read in studies um, that they're going to eventually get produced, um, and then if you have the antibodies for Lyme disease, your body continues to produce those antibodies for months or even years after the infection has been cleared. So there's really no way to use those tests to determine like, okay, that treatment was good. For the Lyme patients who have gone through the 21 or 28 day antibiotic protocol um, established by the IDSA, um, the, those patients who are still suffering with cognitive issues, joint pain, fatigue, um, all those telltale signs of Lyme disease are um, being given a new diagnosis which is called post-treatment Lyme disease syndrome, 
PTLDS for short. And that is an even more interesting topic because as I said, you know, those tests are so unreliable. So you cannot determine that the infection has been eradicated, but then you're given this new diagnosis and there's no treatment protocol for that. There's no medical coding for that. So a lot of patients are just kind of being left high and dry. According to John Hopkins studies and studies conducted by the International Lyme and Associated Disease Society, roughly one in five Lyme patients do develop chronic illness. The studies that have been conducted on those with post-treatment Lyme disease syndrome or just you know failed the standard Lyme treatment, they um, don't seem to improve much with further antibiotic treatment and so the CDC has kind of just said no no more treatment after the 21 days of doxycycline or comparable antibiotic animal studies have proven that in primates and mice this bacteria is traceable past those treatment standard treatment protocols and a John Hopkins study showed that there is traceable inflammation in the brain of patients who are, are still experiencing the cognitive uh, function problems and pain that is associated with post-treatment Lyme disease syndrome. Also, the drug doxycycline or the any comparable antibiotic amithrazithin and um, cetrifish who I'll put it on the screen um, <laughs> um, those drugs don't necessarily target other co-infections that come along often with Lyme disease so if you're brand new you don't know what the heck I'm talking about please check out above I'm gonna link the um, my understanding Lyme video I kind of go into depth about all of this stuff but um, oftentimes when you are bitten by a insect that's carrying Lyme disease it's not only carrying Borrelia burgdorferi it's carrying other bacterias some common co-infections are Lickia, Bartonella, Babesa, and that drug, doxycycline, which is used to target Borrelia burgdorferi, doesn't have any effect on that. So if you're still experiencing symptoms past your 10 to 21 days of doxycycline, could very well be that you are also dealing with other co-infections. Another interesting thing about this is that the bacteria that causes Lyme disease is very stealthy. It has the most complex DNA structure of any bacteria on earth and it um, can actually defend itself and adapt to any kind of antibiotic or immune response that the body is experiencing. And I'll pull up a slide or a video here that shows a a slide underneath a microscope they took the spirochete um, form of Lyme disease and rinsed it with penicillin and you can actually see it metamorphize into a cyst form and this is very stealthy very um, smart way for it to defend itself because most antibiotics work by attacking the cell wall and Borrelia can actually curl up into that cyst form and lose its cell wall and the the um, antibiotic just doesn't even affect it anymore. It also has another defense where it can create a biofilm around itself that helps it to adhere to our inner tissues and things and um, most antibiotics are not effective against the biofilm form as well. So my opinion is that I do not think doxycycline alone is enough to eradicate the bacteria that causes Lyme disease. Not only are we unable to test the effectiveness of these treatment protocols, but we have multiple clinical studies showing that uh, you know one in five patients are failing this treatment and um, that the bacteria itself can actually metamorphize. It can um, get into the cells, it can get into the tissues where um, these antibiotics are having a hard time getting to it. 
If they are getting to it, the, the uh, bacteria can turn into a cyst and protect itself. It's also, while it's um, disseminating and spreading throughout the body, it is shedding proteins and um, those proteins can actually attach to our healthy tissues, confusing the immune system into attacking our healthy tissues and causing autoimmune type response in the body. And there's, it's a very, very complex uh, infection. If you're lucky enough to just be infected with Borrelia burgdorferi, which is happening less and less as these um, insects are you know, picking up more pathogens, as they reproduce, they are passing these pathogens off to their offspring. So one tick can have up to 5,000 offspring, and if that tick was Lyme positive, or Lichia positive, Poisson virus positive, whatever that is, it's passing that down to all of its offspring. So as we are experiencing warmer winters and uh, more mild winters, these um, insects are really having a chance to breed and really spread this illness and all tick-borne illnesses around the world. So my opinion, if I were to be bitten by a tick today and see the bullseye rash, I would absolutely go to the doctor, I would get my round of doxycycline or comparable antibiotic, and I would also be doing everything in my power to support the immune system, to reduce inflammation, to support the detoxification system, and um, promote a healthy gut. And um, I would be on the lookout for any other symptoms that may be coincided with any co-infections, and I would do my best to just reduce all pathogens by really supporting the immune system. Um, I write all about this in my new book, The Lyme Ease Survival Guidebook. So um, if you're interested in learning about my Lyme recovery and research, I write out all of my tips and tricks and research and experiences in this clear, concise guide for Lyme patients, The Lyme Ease Survival Guidebook. I will put links below so that you can find that. It's on Amazon um, and on Kindle ebook reader. All right, so that's about all I have on that this week. If you are in the position where you got a single pill of antibiotic for Lyme disease, I would highly recommend that you follow up with a Lyme literate physician. You can find helpful links on how to do that down below, as well as on my website, jenhyla.com. On the resources page, I have a lot of free resources on there to kind of help you understand and manage this illness, as well as tips on how to protect yourself and your family. So check that out. Let me know if you have any questions down below in the comments, and um, let me know what you'd like to learn more about. I'm doing my best to record a new video each and every week. So um, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe, and I will see you next week, all right? Until then, keep healing.